Should Bears coach Matt Eberflew's job security be in question? Do you believe he'll be back in 2024? And can you please explain your answer? Does his future define ambition of the program in your opinion? Uh, good topic. And, um, you know, I, I like the, um, I like the second question as much as the first, frankly, um, whether or not this defines the ambition that, that the management that the team has, listen, um, I came in here, uh, after the Detroit game, I've said this and I felt like you can't keep this guy after the first loss to Detroit, that terrible come from behind loss like that's it i would not like that's a that's such a bad loss in the nfl be up a couple digits and then give the game away in the final three minutes i i can't abide by that and i i think it's and then he hammered his finishing finishing they won a couple games and i thought and i thought his demeanor was different i thought he sounded to me like a guy who had gotten some good news like they had told him you know, listen, we're sticking with you, Matt. You're the man. And um, and then that loss last week happened. And I came in here on uh, Monday, and I was just, I can't, I, I, I mean, I've seen enough. I don't want to see that anymore. I don't ever want to watch another loss like that and all that it took, the bad decisions that it took, the, the, the bad play, but really the bad decisions, both sides of the football. It, it's still on the head coach. So, in my mind, I don't want him back right now. That may change in a couple weeks. I'm not saying it won't. But I think that that this is a worthy topic of conversation. So to answer the job, yes, his job security should be in question. Yes, you you know, when you fire two coaches in the course, and I know one resigned under pressure, in the course of a season, that's really bad. He's done a great job as a defensive coordinator. How's he done as a head coach? Does the defensive coordinator position get in the way of his ability to coach the entire team? Is he is he breaking down the tape and questioning every decision that's made and wondering, hey, why are we doing this and why are we doing that? And and getting answers as to why those ideas are there. So I, I think that um I think that um if you are ambitious, and I will I will go to Zach's point, why settle of course his job security should be in question he's got the worst winning percentage in the history of any guy to ever coach the Bears so <sighs> you have to be asking what if but kind of like the question with the quarterback other than David Hawes guy and I say if he was here I'm not talking behind his back Jim Harbaugh so Jim Harbaugh is going to they're going to win the division next year because Jim Harbaugh comes in I don't think so. My point is, is that it's a, it's a, it's a crapshoot. You, you don't know. You don't know what the next guy in. Now, maybe you could do what the Cubs have done a couple of times here. Maybe for the moment, you're keeping Matt Eberflus and you're not making a decision on January the 9th, which I believe is this year's version of Black Monday. And maybe you see who else makes some moves, and then all of a sudden. If you think Mike Tomlin is a guy that can take you to, you know, oh, so Mike Tomlin's available. Oh, Bill Belichick is available. But, oh, now, okay, now, Matt, thanks for your efforts. Enjoy a year off. Bring those guys in. But just, let, let's see. We still don't know what the situation is with the quarterback. We have no idea. But should the ambition of the program be bigger? Of course, the program ambition should be bigger, but I don't think Matt Eberflus coaching the Bears next year defines whether or not they have enough ambition. Yes, Matt Eberflus's job security should be in question. I can't envision a scenario where Matt Eberflus and this coaching staff is back for 2024 for a variety of different reasons. But the biggest one is if you make the decision to draft a quarterback with the top overall pick, you better put together an infrastructure that begins with an offensive-minded head coach to allow whoever that quarterback is going to be the best opportunity to be successful. Because the Bears are building something. Like the reason that, that Mully was so frustrated after that Cleveland game 
is because, and this sounds sounds laughable, but it's not. The Bears should be a significantly better team than what we've watched this season. You can't blow that game that they blew against Denver earlier in the season. Mm. You can't squander a victory in Detroit the way they did. You cannot allow what transpired in the fourth quarter in Cleveland to happen. The goal is to win. When you put yourself in a position to win games, you can't give them away the the way the Bears have. And we hear this talk. This goes back to some of the stuff that we hear over the course of the year here on The Score. You'll hear people talk about the hot coordinator. Oh, Ben Johnson should be a guy that the Bears should interview or the defensive coordinator in Cincinnati. Here's what you don't know. People can be great defensive coordinators. Vic Fangio was a phenomenal defensive coordinator. He's not a head coach. And his assistants, who were highly regarded, had been terrible when they've moved up in the world, whether it's Brandon Staley or Sean Desai. Some some people, the, the and maybe Matt Eberflus is this guy, maybe he's just a good defensive coordinator. He's a terrible head coach. He doesn't understand analytics. He doesn't represent your team well in press conferences because how many times, and that does matter, he's the face of your franchise. He's the guy that talks to the public every single day. And it's because of the inability to understand analytics and understand game management that the Bears have lost three games that they should have won this season. And that alone is why you fire a guy. But then when you add in the the quarterback equation to the mix and the ability to score points, which is what you want with a quarterback, the ability to convert on third downs offensively, the ability to, to have your quarterback play at his best in the fourth quarter, you need those things. And I don't want to hire another, I don't want to have a defensive minded head coach, hire another offensive coordinator, and as soon as things go well, that offensive coordinator leaves. Give me an offensive minded head coach, a lot easier to have a coordinator on defense.